It doesn't matter what you don't have. What really matters is what you have and what you can do with it. Ever since childhood, I've had this dream of representing the country at a sport that I play. The end goal was to wear the Indian jersey, get onto the podium, get the gold medal around it, get the national flag and Janagana Mana playing because of my victory. And ever since childhood, I've been chasing that dream. I was introduced to cricket by my dad by, when I was six years old. He took me to a nearby cricket coaching camp in Calcutta. And uh, the coach, while looking at me, just said that, take him home, he cannot play, he just has one hand. I was like, what have I done? But my dad requested, like, just throw a few balls, test him out, let's see what he can do. So he gave me a bat, he threw a few balls, I, just, I was just swinging aimlessly, had no idea what's to be done. And I missed all the balls. He said, please, take him home. Let's, let me just try some other sport with him, but not cricket. We go back home that day, and I'm, I was really sad. I was facing rejection at the age of six. My dad calls me, like, the witch, come here and uh, see, this is what it is. This is what you have. Let's use it. Deal with it. Let's figure out a way how you can play this sport in a better way and uh, use your right arm to the advantage. So, we figure out a way. It took me 10 years of training, coaching, a lot of games in Calcutta, around India, and then finally got selected for West Bengal under-16 team. And that's how I bat out. What a good shot! My friend got a little excited by taking the shot. Oh, smoked that, smoked it. Chalo, finally you got one flicked out, man. So basically, I use my right arm to the advantage. I use it as a support mechanism. Even to catch a ball, I use my right hand side so that it's, it works as a right arm and I don't miss out on any balls. It was basically about using my potential, using my right arm to the most potential. This was a need. Fast forward to 2015. I was done with my work. I was done with school. I had a job. I was in Bangalore. And then I was faced with a quintessential uh, existential crisis. What am I supposed to do now? What's next? Am I just supposed to like go to work, 9 to 5, get back home, eat, drink, sleep, next day repeat? There's nothing else in life to do? And then I was stuck in Bangalore traffic one day. Let me show you something really beautiful. My distance from home to work was 11 kilometers. And uh, I would spend one and a half hours on a daily basis, just one way, being a red line on Google. Uh, and I was done with it. It was frustrating. It, it is... My output at work was literally zero because I would be so frustrated spending one and a half hours just to get to work. As a result, I got out of this one random day, went to decathlon. I believe everybody knows what decathlon is by now. And I just purchased a very basic commuter bike, bicycle. We will cycle today. And then I started riding to work. 11 kilometers, one and a half hours stuck in traffic, was crashed to 45 minutes just on a cycle. And I was liking it. Somewhere in my head, that bug came back like, Hey, Dhiraj, this sport is interesting. Maybe you should try it out. That dream of yours on the gold, maybe this is the one which will get you that. I was like, all right. Practically speaking, what is cycling? I have two legs. I just have to pedal and just move forward, right? And hey, I have one less arm, so I'm more aerodynamic. I let the air flow through on one side. So yeah, this, this sport works. Let's see what's being done in this sport, like in this country with this sport. So I opened Google and I'm like, uh, let's put in paracycling. I put in India. I come across this foundation based in Hyderabad called the Aditya Mehta Foundation. So this foundation supports uh, paramilitary, differently abled civilians and paramilitary forces from BSF, ITBP, CRPF, the ones who've lost their limbs, arms, or had any kind of an incident. And uh, we support them to take up any kind of sport and then scale them all the way to a level where they can represent the country. So I reached out to them like, hey guys, I'm really interested in this. This sport's working really well for me. I'm interested. I want to know more because my basic knowledge is all on Google videos, blogs of other riders who are riding. I have no other, I have no other idea what's to be done. I just know I can go fast. So tell me what more's to be done. They tell me, all right, we'll give you a chance. We're having, we, we have this uh, ride from Manali to Khardungla in August. And this was in April when I reached out to them. So I had like three, four months barely to train to get to a level where I could climb to the Himalayas. And they were like, no, why don't you come over in August? We'll test you out. And we're doing a hill ride from Manali to Khardungla, which is a 550 kilometers ride, to Khardungla, which is ahead of Leh, and that's world's most highest motorable road at 18,000 feet. So I like, yeah, screw it. I'm just coming along. And I started riding. I started riding all the way to Himalaya, starting from Manali to Leh. And then on 15th of August, on our Independence Day, I reached Khardungla, which is the top of the world. 
Thank you. This is where I realized that, okay, this is the sport that I want to do. But hey, before I put in all my investment into this, before I put in all the time and effort into this, let's be triple sure. I believe we all have this spark of madness in us, which makes us unique. If we lose that, we are just the same and it's too late to be the same, right? I did something really crazy after that to be really, really sure about this sport. I went on to do the 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers, and then 600 kilometers in a day to become India's first paracyclist super randonia. <laughs> super randonneering is basically doing braves, which are these endurance sports with the gentleman major before me just mentioned about these. That these are these long rides which you do without stopping. Like you take a short break to drink, I mean, use the washroom, but that's about it. You eat and drink on the way. And you have a stipulated time under which you have to complete this, just like this talk. This was when I was sure, like, this is it, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to put in everything possible to get the goal and to reach that goal of mine. A few major learnings which I picked up from this, that in order to achieve a larger goal in life, we really have to be discomfort, like, you have to be friends with discomfort. And no matter what comes in your way, be it traffic, people, pollution, whichever government, you just keep moving forward. Cycling as an equipment also doesn't have a reverse guy, you just have to move forward. Fast forward, 2017, around January, is when I get a call from my foundation in Hyderabad. Like, hey, Divij, uh, we got to know that there's an Asian Championship in Bahrain. Uh, do you want to go? I'm like, whoa, this is, this is my calling. I have to go. Like, all right, so they're like, come over to Hyderabad. We'll have a trials. And uh, if you're good enough, then we'll go. I'm like, sure. I go down to Hyderabad. I win the trials. And I get to wear my jersey for the first time. This is just a part of my dream coming true. Not even anything, like it's just 1% done. My first race, Bahrain, on a borrowed bicycle. I didn't even have a road bicycle. In fact, I didn't even have a proper time trial bicycle. So there are two types of races in cycling. There's a time trial and then there's a road race, similar to running where there's a 100 meter dash and then there's a marathon, right? Mine was a time trial. Now what is a time trial? This is a specific time trial bike. I'll get to it later. But what is a time trial? A certain distance is set, say for example, 25 kilometers. Every rider goes through the same distance, same route, everything's the same. And every rider starts one minute after the previous rider. So basically, it's a race against time. It's a race against the distance. It's a race against your own mind. It's you versus you in the purest form. My first race was in Bahrain. It was a 21 kilometer time trial race. New roads, new life, new cycle, borrowed bicycle, not even mine. For the first time, I'm riding on a road bike, which are like 23 millimeters in like diameters. So it's very thin and I'm like, all right, let's just do it. I have this opportunity, I have to make the most of it. As a result, India wins gold, silver and bronze and I get to win my first silver ever. It was so momentous that the Bahraini shake on my left also went like, mashallah. This is my first victory. A lot of people said that you can get lucky the first time. So yeah, it was just luck. And that hurt me somewhere. That hurt me deep, deep within that, hey, I put in a lot of work into this. I have a full-time job as well. So I, I did put in a lot of work into this and this is not luck, this is a lot of work. But then I had to prove them wrong. So I went out again. Next year, I had one more to ride. My, uh, Myanmar, 21 kilometers, road race in the roads of Napido, which is a new city. As a result, we start off the time trial. This time I have another bike, I have a coach. I have some structure in place now, but not enough. Bahrain race, I lost by one minute and 58 seconds to the person who won gold. So I had a lot of gap to be covered and I had a lot of training to be done because one minute 58 is a long time in cycling. Myanmar, one year down, 2000, 2018. Result, I get to win the silver again. This time there's no luck, there was work. I won the silver for the second time with a gap of 50, 52 seconds to the gold. So I knew I had crashed on a considerable amount of time. But in order to get to the gold, it requires a lot, a lot of work. And I knew a lot of investment was to be made. How do I get investments? So I reach out to a lot of individuals. I reach out to a lot of brands. I reach out to the government. But sadly, the structure in India as such, paracycling doesn't have a very good structure by the government. So in order to reach my goals, I have to support myself. I reach out to my foundation, 
I reach out to my parents and I reach out, I depend on my own salary from work. So much so that I moved from a finance role to a sales role because, hey, sales, more money. So I had to work harder to get higher goals, to meet those incentives, get more money so that I can invest that on cycling again. So I had to develop those skills on sales side. I had to develop all those soft skills which are required. I'm not the only cyclist who goes through these. I'm not the, in fact, I'm not the only para-athlete who goes through these issues in this country. There are a lot of others like this. But luckily, I have been associated with two companies who I've been working with and they've been extremely supportive. So Touchwood, it's been really great for me. Last year in uh, Jakarta, we had these Asian Games. And right after Asian Games, we had the Asian Para Games. I had both the forms of races in that. I had a road race and I had a time trial. The time trial, I lost it by, I, I lost to the fourth position because I crashed and I came fourth. So that was a silver lining for me. But uh, the road race, it was a 71 kilometer road race. And uh, towards the end of it, on the 70th kilometer, 950 meters is when we did the bunch sprint. And that's when everybody was coming in together, charging in together. You see that's the Iran guy who's the second last, and then that's me, last. Being on the top doesn't come easy. This defeat killed me, literally killed me. I was depressed. I was like, I don't know what's to be done. Let's like, just leave this spot. This is not for me. I couldn't even bunch sprint. What am I going to do in the Olympics if I can't even win in Asia? I'm, completely, I'm coming last. Like Literally, there was no hope then. I was shattered. I went back home. My confidence is gone. I've lost both my races. I have nothing else to do. I remember an incident which happened 25 years ago. I was four. I was at my nanny's place here in Calcutta. I believe everyone's played with a paper aeroplane as a kid. I was playing with a paper aeroplane. My mom, my brother, my cousins were inside this lift which we manually shut. And uh, while they were inside, I was playing with it. I put my right arm through the gates and I was like, Mom, you're going down. Please throw this. I'm done playing with it. The gates were shut. The lift was active. And at that moment, someone from the ground floor pressed the button. So the lift went down and the hand got cut. And I could see it get cut right in front of me. I could see the blood, the sparks, the screaming, all the stuff. But uh, I just couldn't cry at that point because there was so much of shock that it just overpowered the pain. I was just aimlessly looking what happened. I go back inside, my nani, dadi, everyone sitting inside. I'm like, dadi, see what happened. And then I collapsed because of the blood loss. Next thing I wake up in the hospital. I, I look at my family standing all around me. They're smiling, but they have tears in their eyes. My hand is all bandaged. I look at it and I'm like, this is it. I have to live with it. Had I given up on life after that victory in Indonesia, I wouldn't be standing up here right now. We are living too dangerously in this whole zone of being comfortable and soft that we tend to forget about, you know, the true potential that we have within us. Cycling as a sport also pushes you. The time trial in itself is a pure game of you versus you. It's challenging your own mind. We have demons in our head which will ask us to give up every time we are trying to push ourselves beyond a certain limit. It's not just restricted to sport. It's restricted to any event in your life. You want to do a project, you want to get a certain assignment done, you have a certain business to set up, you have to do the next set. You have to run that one extra kilometer. Your mind will be like, give up, let it be, do it tomorrow. We'll wake up 5 o'clock tomorrow morning and do it. We tend to give up, but we have other control over our mind. If you let the mind control your body, then you might not get anywhere. But if you realize that you have the power to rule your mind, You'll see strength you never had. You'll see the confidence boost that you never had. And I believe if, if you believe you have the true potential within you and you have what it takes to get to the goal, life will present you with that opportunity again. I had that opportunity earlier this year in Uzbekistan. We had another Asian, Asian cycling championship, 25 kilometers of time trialing. My favorite form, the purest stuff. It hurts, it hurts, and it's fun. Six degrees cold, rain, thunder, crosswinds, headwinds, everything to make the life hell. Result. I get to win the silver third time for India, but this time I lost it by six seconds. <laughs> Winning the goal doesn't come easy, and six seconds, it's basic learnings of life. Every second counts. I won't take more time of yours and mine. Let me end by telling you that there's this saying, there's a story that there are always these two hills, uh, two wolves on a hill. 
There's one which is on top of a hill and there's another one which is climbing the hill. Always, always be the one which is trying to climb the hill. That wolf is hungry. That wolf is looking for the next feast of success. That wolf wants the challenges. Always be that wolf climbing the hill. And ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what you don't have. What really matters is what you have and what you can do with it. Thank you.